Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over the top beautiful day here in the end times. The road construction in the end times on this unbelievably gorgeous fall of 2024 day. It is now Tuesday, October 8, 2024, and uh, I am barreling across eastern New York. I am in the Catskill Mountains on this spectacular day, heading to Vermont, enjoying these fall leaves and going to load up this truck on a, a bunch of perennials. And uh, <coughs> sitting here with, uh, you know, all of my, all of my normal warning lights <coughs> on this truck with, uh, I guess I now have rear end gear oil blowing out of my blown axle seal as I uh, barrel along through the construction uh, with the uh, with the emergency service vehicles uh, Jesus you know I've just been reflecting back uh, on how much of my life have I spent uh, just driving down the road with all of these warning lights flashing and and just keeping my fingers crossed by the skin of my teeth uh, that some fucking old car or truck that I'm driving uh, is, is going to get me to my next stop without breaking down or killing me good God, I could write a fucking book. I'm sure I have uh, told all the stories on a Humpty Dumpty drive over over the last 15 years about uh, used cars or old beat up cars I have known and loved. Good Lord, where to start? I think I will. Uh, I, I've told all these. I, I'm going to send this out. This is about the the Blue Avenger. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Blue Avenger, I'm just going to sit here and tell Blue Avenger stories until this uh, battery collapses. So the Blue Avenger was a 1978. Toyota Corolla hatchback, uh, one of the greatest, most dependable cars ever made uh, in, in the in the history of mankind. The 1978 Toyota Corolla. Uh, good Lord, uh, I, I wish I had just bought 20 of them brand new and kept them in storage. And so, anyway, I was uh, living in, in up near Eugene, Oregon, and uh, getting ready to take my first drive to Costa Rica, which was about 7,000 miles of bad road. And uh, so, I, I, I didn't want to take my nice truck. Uh, on that journey without knowing what it was like. And I said, okay, I'm going to buy some old beater and uh, j j just to get a feel for what it feels like to drive from Oregon to Costa Rica. Uh, and if, uh, if the fucking car breaks down, uh, fuck it, I'll just get out of the car and, and figure it out between buses and planes and whatnot. So, uh, 
I shop around and I end up at Main Street Motors in Springfield, Oregon. They, you know, the home of the Simpsons, Springfield, Oregon. I, I remember Main Street Motors on a Sunday afternoon and there was this navy blue uh, beat up old uh, Corolla just sitting on the back of the lot and, and the guy was closing up and stuff and it wasn't on the lot for sale and so uh, I was looking at his other stuff that I wasn't interested in and I said what's the story on the uh, on, on that Corolla and he's and he says that thing is, is a piece of shit uh, he goes I'm just parting it out and I said, you're parting out a, a, this was 1992. So this, this car was 14 years old and had 229,000 miles on the odometer when the odometer broke. So we knew it had at least 229,000 miles on a 14 year old car. And, uh, it, you know, he said it's overheating, the cooling system is shot, and, uh, and I said, well, what do you want for it? And, and uh, he goes, well, it's not for sale right now. I'm, uh, he, he, goes, I, he goes, it's got, it looks like brand new tires on that thing. He, he goes it has he goes it has like brand new tires he goes I don't understand why anyone put brand new tires on that piece of shit and it's got a really good stereo in it he goes I'm basically gonna gonna take the uh, stereo and the tires out and uh, and just junk uh, the, the the car itself and uh, I, I said, what will you take for it right now? It was like five o'clock on a, uh, on a uh, Sunday afternoon. A and uh, he goes, what do you want to do with this car? He goes, where do you live? And I said, I, I, I live in Cottage Grove, which was about 20 miles south of, it, it was about a 30 mile drive back to my house. And uh, you, you know, my I was my my friend was driving me around so I could get a car, and uh, I said, I'm uh, I, I said, well, I live in Cottage Grove. I said, but I'm driving this car to Costa Rica, and he looked at me and he burst out laughing, and, and, he, and he goes. He goes, this car is not making it to Costa Rica. He goes, this car is not making it to Cottage Grove uh, without overheating. Uh, and uh, I said, how much do you want for that car? Uh, and you will never see it again. I said, I will send you a postcard from Costa Rica. And he laughed. He said, $150. And I said, $150 cash money, and you will uh, sign that title over and give me the keys to that car. And, uh, and he goes, and you are on your own. Don't bring it back. And I said, you'll never see this car again. Give him $150. Drive off. Of course, the thing uh, was, was overheating uh, when I was about 10 miles down the road. But I, but I made it back to uh to cottage grove uh and i had a, like like i do now with this truck i i had about three weeks to get this thing ready and uh so it needed a new radiator so the first thing i needed was a uh what was a radiator uh, and so the, the goddamn radiator, of course, was more than I had paid, more than I had paid for the, uh, for the whole car. So what I did was I shopped around for a, uh, 
another Corolla with the same radiator in it at these used car shops. So I found this this uh, one for uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars for a uh, for a Toyota Corolla in about the same shape is the one that I'd paid hundred and fifty for. So I call the salesman and uh, talk to him and uh, he, he says yeah it's still here and I said well I said the only thing I need to do is run it by my mechanic to let my mechanic look at it and he goes dude it's a Corolla for seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, you're wasting your money and and I said uh, uh, my buddy can uh, can look uh, at this car uh, it'll take him one hour uh, I will have that car back uh, and, 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 and he said fine so I I, uh, I go up there uh, and I well I, I drove the uh, you know so I drove the the uh, the Corolla and so my friend was uh, you know my partner in crime so what we did was we stashed we stashed my $150 thing with the rotten radiator and uh, th then went to the car dealer and uh, so the salesman I could tell he was pissed off but he, he, he said that there's nothing wrong with this car uh, and I said I will be back in one hour and you know where I went as we went racing back to the uh, where we had the car stash and we switched the radiators out I I still feel kind of bad to this day uh, uh, about doing that uh, so I I we ripped the radiator out of my car uh, ripped the good radiator out of the $750 one, switched them out. I take the uh, I, I, I take the $750 car back, and the salesman sitting there looking at me and waiting for the $750. And, and I said, I said my mechanic said don't get it. He goes, what are you talking about? I, I said, uh, I, I, I said my mechanic said hold on uh, don't uh, don't buy this car and, and he's going dude it, it's a it, it's a Corolla for seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, he goes I've been driving this thing all around uh, it's part there's nothing wrong with this car uh, and I said well let me sleep on it for a couple of days and uh, I gave him the keys back and, and uh, he was just looking at me like what the fuck it, it, is this uh, it, is this dude talking about so that is how I started out of Eugene Oregon uh, on this uh, uh, on this 7,000 mile trip to uh, to uh, Costa Rica so you know I, I a court it had good tires uh, you, you know I, I changed all the belts and the hoses and all the fluids and put new front brakes and you, you know all of that kind of stuff obviously uh, I did the the basic stuff and I went and and, and just bought a bunch of auto parts you know the ones most likely to break like uh, you know I I got a water pump and a fuel pump and uh, just just a, and an alternator and uh, you know things uh, that would most likely go wrong uh, with that with that car uh, on this trip to uh, to Costa Rica and then I just figured I would sell the car down there and fly back so uh, I throw these parts you know they're they're in a box 
I pack them up and, and I head out of Eugene, Oregon and uh, stopped uh, some friends in uh, California. I remember packing the wheel bearings with grease. That was, that was in the days when you could do stuff like that. And, uh, and, and my friend in Mendocino, California, laughing at me. My friends in Santa Cruz laughing at me. My friends in L.A. laughing at me. Uh, everybody's saying this piece of shit. No, no fucking way. It, it's going to make it to Costa Rica. And so I'm heading down. And so uh, I cross into Mexico. And... Uh, I'm sure I entertained the, uh, the, the border guards in Mexico. God damn, am I fucking lucky. Uh, I was just going 80 miles an hour in a 65, and the fucking uh, state trooper just passed me going 80 in a 65. Jesus, I'm having a heart attack here. So, uh, why didn't that guy pull me over? Uh, it's probably the, the hot and ready now sign in front of the donut shop in Albany. Uh, anyway, I got thrown off. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, anyway, so I cross into Mexico and things quickly go downhill. They quickly go downhill with the goddamn uh, cooling system and uh, you know obviously I I took the thermostat out and and uh, but you know it kept overheating and I was in Mexico so let's see when I pulled into Veracruz Mexico on a Sunday morning in Veracruz, Mexico, uh, what I had was behind my seat, I had a five gallon bucket of water, and then on the that, that the windshield washer, you, you, you know, the windshield washer, which actually worked fine. What I would do when it started to overheat is I would hit the windshield washer and the windshield washer pump would suck water out of the five gallon bucket of water behind my seat. You know, there was this little uh, plastic tube that, uh, that we had uh, going from the from the five gallon bucket to uh, the the top of the engine block so I would hit the windshield washer and the and the windshield washer pump would spray water all over the top of the engine block now on top of the engine block was a coconut uh, sitting on top of the engine block was a coconut uh, and the hood was closed on top of the coconut and then there was a goat collar uh, this, this uh, mechanic got the collar off of his goat it is what he used to, to strap the hood down on top of the coconut to, to you know to have the air circulation blowing through so the the hood was actually raised about three inches so I had the air circulating uh, around there and I would hit it with the windshield uh, washer pump and and spray water all over the engine block well, that got me to, uh, to, uh, Veracruz, and, uh, by, by the time I got to Veracruz, 
uh, five gallon buckets of water and coconuts and, and goat collars and all the rest. It just wasn't cutting it. Obviously, I was not making it to uh, to Costa Rica uh, on this uh, on this truck. I mean, in that in, in the Blue Avenger. So I. Uh, I head into uh, into Veracruz, Mexico, uh, hitting the windshield uh, washer pump as hard as I could, looking for a uh, mechanic open at the crack of dawn on a Sunday morning. Well, of course, every mechanic in the country of Mexico was on a tequila bender the night before, so there was not a grown man to uh, be found so I there was this kid I don't know maybe he was 12 years old uh, he was there at one of these roadside mechanicos just hanging out there in the yard and I pulled in and uh, he, he got uh, th this kid got quite the laugh uh, out of my five gallon bucket of water and the coconut and the goat collar that that, that was his entertainment for the Sunday morning and, and, and I said uh, you know Chico uh, I, I, I need to get down the road I said you need to get me down the road so he goes and uh, he opens the hood and disappears under the hood this 12 year old kid and he pops back up about 10 minutes later with this very pained expression on his face saying uh, gringo uh, uh, you know lo siento I'm sorry that uh, your water pump your bomba de agua esta ruinado rompido uh, that the water pump was completely fucking gone uh, that I that I needed a new water pump and uh, obviously he did not have a new water pump and, and he said you're basically just chingado uh, you, you, you know you're fucked and uh, so uh, I said no problema and, and I reached in my box and I pulled out the water pump and, and his face lit up and that kid disappears under my truck and 20 minutes later uh, I have my water pump installed and uh, he tops off the radiator and all of that and he was absolutely thrilled with that ten dollar bill uh, he had never had that much money in his life when I gave him a ten dollar bill uh, for his uh, 20 minutes of work uh, and so I took off out of Veracruz Mexico and uh, made it to Costa Rica good Lord what all I, I, I mean you know it was just one constant thing after another uh, driving that car to Costa Rica but as soon as you get south of the Rio Grande River th those guys any 12 year old uh, can, can get you down the road so I would just go from breakdown to breakdown and, and these guys for a $10 bill uh, would get me down the road and I make it to Costa Rica and uh, my friend uh, no, it wasn't my friend. It was my mother. That's right. My so uh, my mother w was coming down to uh, Costa Rica uh, to visit, and she was she was a little bit doubtful uh, about the uh, uh, about the Blue Avenger. Of course, she had been uh, hearing stories about the Blue Avenger. So. The day before my mother arrives for her trip uh, all over Costa Rica in that uh, in that car and for her whirlwind uh, one trip of her life to Costa Rica, the day before the entire car breaks in half. I, I mean, literally, the frame of the car 
broke in half. And that was the end of the Blue Avenger, uh, so I thought, uh, but uh, never fail. It, it uh, was about two blocks to a welder, and, uh, and somehow, I can't even remember, how the fuck did we even get that car uh, into his lot? And uh, somehow we, uh, we, we, we got the Blue Avenger up on some concrete blocks. Uh, I remember getting it jacked up onto these concrete blocks. And, you know, he got the seam. I mean, it was broken clear through. So he got the seam, uh, you know, as close as he could get and welded it and he said well it's gonna have to cool overnight uh so there's the cop pulling good god i i, I how the fuck did i uh get out of that one so he said well gringo has got to cool overnight but uh, it should be fine in the morning so he he uh welds up the the entire frame of the blue avenger uh obviously my mother uh did not uh, hear that story so she comes down there for two weeks totally fine so i i i, I drive that car to costa rica i drive it around costa rica for three months I'm down there for three months. I mean, I'm taking that fucking car through rivers uh, over 12,000 foot uh, mountain passes down there. You know, I didn't give a fuck. I was already down there. Uh, I, I, I was just having fun trying to kill that car. Well, at the, at the end of three months, the Blue Avenger w was still driving just fine. Uh, and uh, so I decide to auction it off uh, for the plane fare back to uh, uh, back to uh, the U.S. So you know I'm living in this little uh, bitty town on the coast called Montezuma, Costa Rica, is where I was living, and uh. So I, I put signs up that I was going to be auctioning off uh, this car, and you should have seen the crowd uh, turning out, not, not of Costa Ricans, but of uh, expats and uh, people like that living down there. So I auctioned the car that I paid uh, $150 for, and uh, it had this bidding war, so the, the winning bid was six hundred dollars for the for the, this woman. She was uh, an an English teacher down there at the country day school. She was an English teacher, uh, and so she wins the auction. And it's not a, you. You got to go through a bunch of shit. Uh, trying to sell a car in, uh, in in Costa Rica, so we we head back into the city. Uh, we, you know, it, it it takes a week, as people will tell you, it's easier to uh, sell and buy real estate in Costa Rica than it is a used car. And uh, I I just told uh, her, I, I said, darling, uh, I, I said I can't take. Six hundred dollars for this car, and she thought, you know, that I wanted more than six hundred. I, I said, no, 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 no. I, I said, I don't want more. I, I, I said, just buy me a plane ticket back to L.A. Uh, let's see what that costs. Uh, so we go to the airport. This is, you know, before the internet. I said, three hundred and twenty-five dollars. And uh, I said, buy me uh, this fucking ticket to L.A. Uh, to get me out of here, back, uh, back to California. 
uh, and uh, you can have this car. And she was uh, absolutely thrilled. So she buys me the plane ticket back to L.A. Uh, we did all the fucking paperwork down at the Costa Rican DMV, which is a whole nother rant. You can imagine what uh, that experience was. And uh, so they tell her that she uh, owes this huge fucking tax bill. I mean, more than she paid for the car, this outrageous tax bill they were uh, they were given this woman, uh, and uh, good lord, the cops are all over here. Uh, Jesus. I am not speeding. All, all these cops keep passing me at 80 miles an hour. Uh, so anyway, her taxes were due in 180 days. 180 days. She had to to uh, scrape the tax money together. And uh, she told me uh, that there's no fucking way that... She, I mean, it was, it was something ridiculous. Uh, like over a thousand fucking dollars they were telling her she goes well I'll just drive the car for six months and uh, and, and see how long it takes them to come uh, get the car uh, so I uh, I said well I hope this car lasts you six months you know I told her just kind of what I had been doing uh, since I had owned it uh, for the last five months and uh, that was exactly her plan so I when I so next year I drove a nice truck down there that's a whole nother story for another rant that I've told a couple of times and I looked her up when I got there and uh, I said well whatever happened with the car and she goes what do you think happened with the car uh, I, I, I said uh, entertain me and she said on the 180th day on day 180 she was at work at the school she looked out her window and the, the fucking uh, wrecker uh, was backing up to that truck to that car hauling the Blue Avenger uh, off into the sunset on day 180 and uh, so she got six months out of that car for $325 so everybody ended up happy and for all I know the Blue Avenger is still alive and well in uh, in a uh, Costa Rica to this day uh, long may you run long may you run that was that was might have been the finest car certainly the greatest $150 car I ever owned but uh, I have got to uh, find there, there has not been one single, not one single rest area uh, on, on this highway. And my bladder says it is time to find. Oh, come on. You know, I, I've, I've actually remember getting off at this goddamn exit. You get off. And it's like eight miles to a goddamn uh, to, to a goddamn gas station. Anyway, hold on, bladder. All right, I'm back to this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times. Getting out and enjoying these beautiful fall leaves while I still can. 
Bye, guys.